playing with these big LED lights off from China. This is one of the more expensive ones. It's like $35. I got quite a few of the $5 ones and they're just useless. And when you light them up, they light very sparse. That means they're not working very well. Uh, so I've been working on these torches. You know, there's a few ideas how to put this together online. And I found this little uh, Peltier module. I'm not going to use this for the torch because they're super, super inefficient. But I just found it and it's... Uh, <clears throat> this is a TEC one, which the temperature can't get too hot because it's got a lot of soldered elements inside, so it will melt. But I just, I, I must use this 10 years ago when I was playing around with cooling CPUs, uh, trying different things out. And I think I got it given by someone in uh, aerospace industry at work. So uh, I just found it, thought I'd have a little play with it and show what it is. Now, uh, I think it, you can vary the voltage and you can't really use this without a heat sink. If you, uh, if you put a small voltage in it and just touch it, you'll feel that it'll suck the heat from, say, your thumb, and it'll make the other side freezing, but it uses that voltage. Also, it'll generate a very small amount of electricity if you, uh, if I plug it in, I'll try and show you. I found these little uh, step up and step down uh, power packs. They're only like seven or eight dollars on uh, e uh, sorry, Amazon, so you get them quick as well. And this is a Grok. I found the, they do both, this is a step down, so I've got a 15 volt battery plugged into it and it won't do anything above 15 volts, but it'll do down to, I don't know, about two. So they look very similar. They have a potentiometer on them. You just vary that with a screw. So if you've got any little projects you want to do in your car or in the garage and you've just got a DC uh, battery, 12 volt battery, this is great to just vary the power to whatever you want, you know, and it's super flexible. So if you stop using it in that thing, you know, in the future, you can see, oh, I can reuse that, you know, and just play with it. The step up ones, I think they'll go up to 80 volts or something like that. So you can put a 15, 12 volt battery in. And these LEDs, they run on 28 to 32 volts. And they're also high ampage as well. well I'll say high ampage. Uh, those lights are three amps, which is quite high ampage for a little device like this. That's why it's got the heat sinks on it on the MOSFETs. Yeah, so these little guys, they'll just generate very minute, I don't know if we uh, can put this over here on the voltmeter and then use some clips for that so I can use other stuff. Okay, I've just put some clips on there so I can move my hands, so got a bit of a heat sink here so we get some differential in the, ah, oh, come on. really weld that on. So if you can see that, if we put any heat or cold on it, it will generate very minute electricity. If we put a, on that sink, might be off my fingers too. So we can get up to like 15 millivolts, 30 millivolts. I've got a cup of tea here, <laughs> let's try this. That's touching. Oh yeah, straight away you can see the difference there. It's up to 50, 60. So that's just the temperature differential between each side of the plates. That's all together. It's generating very slight amounts of electricity. I'm sure the ampage is super small and we can try that quickly. So it's on like two milliamps there, uh, so let's uh, stick it on here and put the cup of tea on top. Also, I'm not sure which side is hot, which side is cold at the moment. Oh, we can see there straight away, so 21. I mean, it's a tiny amount of electricity, you'd struggle lighting a little LED with it, maybe. But you can see that's pretty cool. We go the other way and uh, if we pull over, I'm going to leave that on amps for a second and uh, well, you should really never leave that on the amp side like that because you might go and try and check the voltage of something and you'll short it. So you should always revert back but I'm going to leave it and pull over a little voltmeter. I'll use this guy for a second, DC to 20. So yeah, got a little step down here. We got it plugged into a 
15 volt battery. So I can also show you these step downs too. So white comes on there. So we plug this little guy into here. Okay, so now we're just on, on one volts with that. I hope we can uh, connect this up to see the voltage. And I'll also connect it up to see the amp ampage as well with this guy because we're still in amp mode. Okay, this mess of wires now, I've actually got it set up so we can see the uh, ampage and the, and the voltage. So we put this across here now, well how can, uh, see I don't know which way it's going to work, but we're on such a low voltage I should be able to feel it. Yeah, straight away. So my thumb side is getting hot and finger side is getting really cold and that's just pulling 0.4 amps and on 1.36 volts so it's not too bad actually it's not getting too hot or too too cold I got spiked by the pointy side of the wire okay and I'll show you that I'll overlay that on the I've got an infrared add-on for my camera Okay, I've got this little uh, seat sensor on my phone. I don't really like phone apps normally, but the sensor's quite good. The resolution is low, but it'll give us a heat signature, and I'll be able to overlay this, overlay this video onto the... It's hard to see at the moment, even by the background, but you'll be able to see my thumbs, and I'll overlay this as I put some voltage on it. So if I try and do all this with one hand, and uh, 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 not a very good electrician, I don't get a picture of that. You can see one side of its heart. You see my finger there at the top. It's not even as hot as my skin at the moment. And then the other side is the coldest, so it's down to 54. And then again, we ro rotate over. Oh, it's getting the hottest now, so now it's just the hotter than my skin. And that's with 1.2 volts. So you can see that in the heat signature, it's quite clear as I rotate my hand. You can see that getting hot there. Okay, let's try something else with it. So I'm not the best electrician in the world. It's probably quite dangerous. Now if we stick it on a heat sink, I guess, we can really... Uh, I'm just going to charge it up again just to see which just moves the hot side. It's quite important, definitely. So my home side is the hot side and the top side is uh, So now we'll stick it on this heat sink like this. Uh, quickly, I'll just show you on this device my T. So I'll overlay this video. And you can see my T is at a nice 100 Fahrenheit, which is quite cool actually. I should drink it. And there's me grabbing out of it. And it's gone. Oh, and look at the table. It's quite hot to where it was. Coolie also. This is a quite cool device. Okay guys, now what I've got done now is I've attached the, uh, the warm side to the heat sink and I'll film this a little bit with this uh, infrared camera. And uh, So at the moment the top is about 39 and we can't see the bottom but the heat sink's getting up to like 57 so it's really not that warm yet. And uh, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and get the top really cold. <laughs> Hopefully the heating there too, but to do that, I'm going to twiddle the uh, the book regulator and let's see what happens. I may have to hold the heat sink down with something because uh, something rubber doesn't conduct, so it'd be like cheating. As we turn this up, and I'm going to go all the way up to 12 volts and we'll probably watch the ampage rise 
Now we have to be careful with this pelt here because it's not a high temperature one. I think they call it TEC. I think it's like 150 degrees C or something. So if the hot side gets too hot, it will melt all the solder. So we'll boost this up to, it's kind of a finite potentiometer this, move that turn in. Which I like, you can really set the voltage. So there are about 12 and yep, definitely getting a lot colder. And you can see the bottom's moving around. I should, I should have used more adhesive than uh, regular heat sink. So, yeah, it's, you can see the wires messing up on the heat camera, but you can see the top's now down to like 14 degrees, and the heating's getting up to like 111. So what I want to do here is, I don't know why the ampage is not showing, because it's providing power, so it must be going through there. And it's really easy to see now. Yeah, I don't understand why the ampage is not going up. It's like the milliamps. Did I miss the range up or something? Man hold. Strange. I thought that was hot to touch then. It was actually freezing. So we can see the dog's okay. Uh, the heat sink now we've got a, a fan on there I can see there with my cup of tea which is getting really cold now I've pumped the voltage up a little due to uh, just the load because uh, I've put the fan on there so that uses a little bit up and then uh, when it sucks it's gonna hit like three amps I think uh, it's gonna melt everything but what we want to do is see if it freezes this water so let's put it on and uh, and see something that's Plastic. I'd really like to hold this down. Okay, here we go. Oh, 3.7. I don't want to put my hand there because... Oh, I can see the heat from my hand, but it might, the sink might come off. So we can see it's down to 5 Fahrenheit there. Uh, it getting... Oh, it is. It's icy. It's actually frozen. I'm put a little bit more on there. Let's see. Gentle does a bit. So that water really warmed everything up, but I'll film this on the macro as well and I'll overlay it. But yeah, we're still at 3.2 amps, 13 volts. Uh, the heat sink is uh, oh, that bloody wire showing up. Get rid of the wire, it'll tell us. Like 111, the heat sink's staying quite cool with that fan now, and now we can see ice that's pretty cool well, that's a peltier i hope you <laughs> i thought i'd just do a two minute video on this peltier i found and it turned into this mess so hope you enjoyed this uh peltiers are cool but they're not very useful because they're super inefficient so you'll you'll find them on like ice coolers and stuff i think but they're really really efficient inefficient sorry not efficient they're like five percent uh, efficient for converting uh, heat to cold so you see there it's getting really really cold again we can probably build an ice statue here if we keep going oh shit I'll do that. paper towel does a great job it's capillary action let's try that again Probably build an ice statue if you uh, keep doing this. Oh, I 
I should probably quit while I'm ahead. This is the problem using it for a CPU because a cold air doesn't hold water, so all that, uh, you get a lot of condensation, so all that hot air around there, and the, the air that's getting freezing cold expels the water and it freezes, so you really don't want that moisture inside your computer. So it's not a really good practical long-term solution to use a Peltier. Unless, I guess, if you had some kind of enclosures or something, maybe that would be good and body it within a water cooler just for the edit. But just the power usage is absurd. You can see I'm using 3.2 amps, that's ridiculous, at 12.7 volts at the moment. I'm using the fan as well, but it doesn't use too much. And again, that water really... But I think the other thing that's showing, the, showing up on this sensor is the cables, because there's high amperage going through them. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you again in the next video. Bye-bye.